Yo, this is Sumex Anderson Anderson. You're watching Title Match Network. Boom. No game plan. My game plan was to be in the NFL. And it was a different time back then. You know, I started in college as a 203-pound defensive end. I ended up being a 265-pound nose guard by the, by the end of the, the four years. And, um, you know, late 80s, early 90s, we're all, if, you, if you're set on playing NFL or playing NBA or playing baseball, that's what your focus was. You know, I was a very, very ignorant man because I had full, a full ride scholarships. And I, instead of getting an education, I played football. I use that education to learn how to lift weights. I learned the education how to play football. And then, but what happens after that? If you don't make it there, and your parents and your friends and your family always say you, you may not make it. And you go, oh, that's not me. Well, guess what? That was me. So now I went from high school, college, arena football, stuck. Oh man, I'm making 500 a game. I got a wife and kid. And there's two, you have to be on, the, game, be on the, uh, the team for 22 weeks. You only get 14 games. So there's eight weeks you're not getting paid. So I'm like, man, Supermax was the number one and best truck and un, truck loader and truck unloader at all of Houston <laughs> because I didn't have that education to fall back on, which I try to tell my kids and any upcoming wrestlers that I'm, that I'm working with, brother, you have to have a plan B. I had no plan B. What happens if I would have blew my knee out or I would have got seriously injured and I didn't make it in wrestling? I'm unloading trucks 30, 40 years. It's insane how guys from our, my generation just put all their eggs in one basket and said, hey, it's now or never. And that was me. And you're a young kid, you got the size, you got the strength, and so in your mind you think that oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go in. But statistically, you know, you meet a lot of guys that are your size mm -hmm. and you're, you know, that are doing the same thing, so it's it's really, really hard to just want. There's over 120 division one schools. Division one A. So how many more is one division double no, two A? I'm sorry, one double A. And then how many are division two, which I was division two, I I played Texas A and Kingsville. The odds were completely stacked against me, and big, big, new, strong. Uh, no one tells me no. Within two years, I'm Houston's number one truck loader. <laughs> so, you, but you understood, uh, you know, early on, you know, that you had to make a transition, you yep. had to make a change. So, so you found wrestling early. You were you're still really young when you got into it. Uh, twenty four, twenty five. Okay. This was uh, late 96, early 97 is when I finally, I saw ECW, uh, the, the pay-per-view with Masato Tanaka and Mike Awesome the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, we had those little boxes where you get the little cheat code to put the, the free pay-per-views. And I saw that and I was hooked. I said, man, I want to be Mike Awesome. I had the bald head, I'll figure that part out, but I want to be just like that guy, the most athletic big man I've ever seen in my life. You know, he was power, he was agile, he just looked cool to me. And that was, you know, everyone says my inspiration was Ric Flair or uh, Shawn Michaels or, you know, Bret Hart. No, mine was my costume. Now that you say that, some of, you, some of the moves that you have too, it looks like like the dive and the, <laughs> and the finisher and all that. Did you get that from my costume? Sir. I 1,000% stole all his shit and tweaked it to make it my own. I'll just tell you, I mean, I'm at the end of my career now, so I can tell you, bro, everything you saw Mike do, I just made it a little bit different, just a little bit, until so people would say, hey, he just bit off this dude. And i tell you a really fun story. I was doing, I did probably about six or seven tours in all Japan, and... Towards the, you know, the fourth or fifth tour, they wanted to boot me as the fake Super Kurt Angle. I wore the, the, the Olympic singlet. I came out to his music, everything. And Mike at the time was the head guy, Gene, 
for the for the whole Japan. For whatever reason, they decided to start tagging me and him together. I'm like, oh my god! I wanted to be a pro wrestler because of this guy. Watching ECW. Five years later, I'm tagging with this dude. So there's only you know. You know, when you're in Japan, there's only about six to eight guys that are American or speak English, and everyone else is Japanese. Well, so most Americans hang out together because, you know, we have that small common bond, and guess what? We're playing, you know, cards together, or we're going to the video game place together, or we're going out drinking together. Well, after about the third or fourth match from the, from the tour, Mike's in charge. Okay, guys, we're going to go drink tonight. Okay, guys, we're staying in. We're playing cards. Guess who wasn't invited? No more. You look at it because I'm doing his shit. And I'm a younger version of what he's doing. And they're tagging us together. I'll never forget one house show. They had me and him tag against Kojima, the young boy. And now they made Mike come out to my music. <laughs> And it was awkward, man. I mean, we get along, we you know, we got along great afterwards. But guys, if you're out there wrestling and you want to be the next Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, whatever it is, don't do exactly their stuff, or it's not going to work. You know, the whole thing where you don't want to meet your heroes. Never meet your hero and be the bootleg version of your hero. That was me. Luckily, I. Clean myself up and start doing the ghetto superstar into what you saw on MTNA and Lucha Underground with the, the Cholo uh, Mexican gangster thing. Did Mike Austin ever talk to you after any of the matches and say, hey, look, you know, you're taking my shit. You know, can you change it up or do your own thing or give you me advice like that? He just walked away. <laughs> Yo, the Super Mexican Anderson Hernandez, you want to see more? Click that subscribe button right now to live and die in LAX. TitleMatchNetwork.com